Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here another movie review. This movie's kind of been out for a while, and I'm just now getting to a review for it, but it's Thor, Love and Thunder. Yes, Thor 4, Thor Love and Thunder. Now, pretty much everybody's seen this movie already, and I already know it's had a mixed reception amongst people and critics. Um, so, pretty much what I can say about this movie probably has already been said, but I just watched it, finally got to see it, I was waiting for a good quality version to come out online, I didn't want to go see the movie in theaters, I couldn't afford it at the time. So... I figured, yeah, I'll just watch the good quality version online. Now, just to say, as far as, like, the, uh, the MCU goes and, like, DC goes in general in terms of comic book movies, in terms of, like, the uh, Marvel, like, cinematic universe, I will agree that they're, like, I am a fan of the MCU, but as far as their films go, they are a bit, they are too similar in terms of their movies, and it does feel like they're just churned out on an assembly line. And their films are too similar. They're all pretty much family-friendly fire. There are some exceptions, but whenever Marvel usually does try to do something different, like Eternals, it really doesn't work. Um, so, but the majority of MCU movies are kind of the same thing. Um, but yeah, they're a franchise. So in terms of a franchise, they're going to have a mostly consistent tone. But still, at the same time, a lot of franchises do try to throw certain things in for variety. And we're up to like the 23rd movie. So there really isn't that much variety in terms of the MCU film franchise. There's more variety on the television shows. Which I've actually enjoyed most of the TV shows. To different levels. Loki being my favorite. But yeah. In terms of the MCU film universe. Yeah there's not a lot of variety going on. Um, but I do like most of the movies. I think most of the movies are good. Or pretty good. There's even some great some awesome ones. Like Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was, was pretty good pretty good. didn't hate it, but I thought it was pretty good. It was a step down from the first one, but it was pretty good. Infinity War and Endgame, I love. The first Avengers, I love. Avengers 2, that's another one I thought was good, but overstuffed, but it was good. Doctor Strange 2, I've done a review for all the MCU films and all the TV shows that I've watched up until now. I need to catch up on the TV shows. I can, there are many series I can binge them in just like one day, what's left of them. But yeah, Doctor Strange 2 I thought was good. I like Doctor Strange 2 better than this. Spider-Man No Way Home, I really liked. Um, but yeah, as far as, like, the DC film universe goes also, Man of Steel, I liked, I didn't love. Batman vs. Superman had problems. I hated the theatrical cut, but I really enjoyed the ultimate cut. Um, Superman in it, like, Zack Snyder's version of Superman, I still think is a bit too stoic and a bit too unemotional. A bit too cold feeling. He needs a little bit more levity. But overall, I really enjoyed Batman vs. Superman. That's, like, a four out of four, like, great film just because of Ben Affleck's Batman. I'm more of a Batman fan, so just because of the dark tone, just how cool Ben Affleck's Batman was, I really enjoyed the film, like, mainly for him. Like, I like Henry Cavill as Superman. I think he's a good, charming actor. But the way Snyder does Superman, I do think he needs a little bit more levity. But at the same time, though, I do think uh, I do think Cavill did a good, solid job as Superman in both films. But I thought Ben Affleck was great as Batman. and He carries BBS for me. I do not like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Pretty much never have. Um... But I really like the Doomsday fight at the end and all the, like, setting up for the Justice League and stuff and Superman's funeral and stuff at the end. Yes, even though it's predictable that it's going to come back or whatever. And if you're, and if you're like, comparing, like, Batman vs. Superman to the comics for the point you're like, well, this isn't, it's too early to do the death of Superman story on the storyline and all that. Yes, if you're comparing it to that, then it probably is worse than what it actually is as a movie. If you're just looking at it as a movie, then I think it mostly works with some clunky stuff here and there. But overall, Ben Affleck's Batman carries the, the whole movie, even the weaker parts, to the point where I have a great time with BBS. For me, it's a great film, great blockbuster flick, even though it does have weak points. I still really enjoy it for Ben Affleck's Batman, looking at it from a film perspective, which is how I judge all movies based off comics. I'm not someone who's like a comic purist, who's sitting there like comparing them like to the source material, like, well, this didn't happen to the source material, that didn't happen to the source material, not right, not good enough. I look at stuff as movies, in terms of representation, and how they're executed. Now, to jump into the Thor movies, the Thor movies were never really that great. Like, Chris Hemsworth is a great Thor, but the Thor movies have always kind of struggled, except for Ragnarok. Thor 1 tried to be serious. In my old review for that film, I think I did actually like that movie. Rewatching it again, it's not that good. Like, that first Thor movie is not that good. Like, they tried to make it like this serious Shakespeare epic, but the writing is weak, and Loki is a very weak villain in that. He just gets a hammer laid down on him, and he's just over. He can't do anything. Like, Loki, they really amped him up, made him better in Avengers. That's when he became awesome and just stole the franchise for a while. And so much that he's got his own show now. But, yeah, that first Thor, it sucked. Thor 2 was even worse to me, like, rewatching it again. I never liked Thor 2. Like, I used to like Thor 1. Watching it again, Thor 1 is pretty bad now. Like, um, 
rewatching Thor 2 now. It sucked. The Dark Elves are a lame ass villain. They're extremely corny and look like something from Power Rangers. Their plot is really idiotic. Thor Ragnarok is great. That is one of the best MCU films it's because of how much pure fun it is. And just that pure fun vibe and pace. It's just a lot of fun to watch. And Tom Hiddleston as Loki, along with Chris Hemsworth as Thor, just make a great pairing. Here, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is a 0 out of 4. This is the worst Thor movie, easily. And I'll say after watching it, this is my least favorite MCU film. This is my least favorite MCU film. Partially because I don't think it's good, and partially because it's coming off such a great film like Ragnarok. What happened here is easily to, to see what went wrong. It's what happens with a lot of directors' movies. You got a first one that's a hit, and the studio says, well, just have way more creative control, and then the director just goes crazy with it. <coughs> that's what happened here. Taka Watiki or whatever just went completely overboard with his comedy here to the point where this doesn't even feel like a Thor film. It feels like a parody of Thor at 90% of the movie. Uh, and Christian Bale is like not even in much of the movie when he is there and he's like showing how dark and evil he is. He's really like just acting circles around everybody, honestly. And he is the scariest villain of the MCU by far when you act, when you see him. He is creepy. But uh, he's in the completely wrong movie. He has like almost no place here. You get the you get the gist of the story. He's the god butcher. His uh, daughter dies, and his god is like selfish and doesn't care about anybody. And just wants people to worship him, and so he gets this magic sword to like pretty much kills gods, but also possesses you and turns you more evil. And he uses it to kill him. And then he goes on a rampage of vengeance just to kill every god in existence. Um, and eventually Thor has to get involved because he like kidnaps the children or whatever of Asgard that's on Earth. And you get a lot of lame comedy jokes here, but they just keep overdoing it and overdoing it. Um, like where Thor's like running around, he's like doing the splits and everything. That was kind of funny, but at the same time, though, they overdo it because they just keep letting the joke go on and on. Like there's no there's no tonal balance here like there was in Ragnarok. Like Ragnarok was fun, but never went like full retard. This movie makes the mistake of going full retard. Just going completely overboard with it. Um, other characters like Jane Foster who shows up in here, Natalie Portman. They want you to care about her character. And I think Natalie Portman, this is her best performance in terms of the Thor films. I think she does a great job here. Uh, she's probably the second best performance in the movie, to be honest, after Christian Bell. And Chris Hemsworth, of course, does a great job as a dumb Thor again. But uh, you've seen it pretty much before. The problem in making Jane Foster, though, like this big important character now, is Jane Foster was never that great in those other two Thor movies. She was just pretty much pointless. So now they're trying to make you, like, care about her. And they have to do a lot of work. So for a lot of the movie, I was like, yeah, your performance is good. I don't really care about you, because they never did anything with your character to begin with in the other two Thors. But by the end, though, you do kind of feel sorry for her, and I like that they had the balls to actually kill her off, because she's dying of cancer, she gets the broken Molnir from uh, Thor Ragnarok that Hela broke, or whatever, Kate Blanchett's character, and uh, it reforms, and uh, she gets the power of Thor, which is kind of cool, and uh, you can tell Natalie Portman, like, buffed up in the role, whatever. she does a great job here for what she's asked to do. Um... Korg, the rock guy, or whatever, like, they're, they're trying to make stuff more inclusive nowadays, or whatever, and like I said in other videos, I'm not political, I don't care about politics, I judge a movie, I just see it as a movie, whether you have an agenda or not, if it works in the film, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't, but a lot of films today just really try to overstuff stuff, like I, with agenda stuff, like I get the fact that we want to be, like, celebratory of, like, it's okay to be gay and stuff like that, that's fine, but when you get to the point where Korg, the rock creature, is talking about, like, his two dads or whatever, like, trying to say, obviously they're trying to say, like, it's okay to be gay, this rock dude has two dads or whatever, I'm like, this, they're pushing it a little far, now we got, what, a gay alien rock, I'm like, come on, <laughs> this is a little much, but yeah, but at the same time, it's it's a rock, it's genderless, so it doesn't really matter, but you get what they're trying to say, but it is a little silly, because it's a fucking rock, but yeah, and the thing about this movie, is it just has too much going on, it's too overstuffed. Like, you got the opening with, like, Christian Bale and all that, and it's like he's almost in his own movie, and then you got, like, this other heavy stuff about Jane Foster with cancer that sometimes works, but other times it's played up too much for laughs and it doesn't really mesh well. But then you got that whole plot line, which is, like, this other big plot line, and then you also got, like, this mini thing at the beginning or whatever with the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, which was kind of fun, but then the Guardians of the Galaxy just leave. And it's like, well, I get they want to take them off into their own Guardians of the Galaxy 3 movie, but at the same time, why did you set that up that he was going to be with the Guardians of the Galaxy at the end of the Endgame when there are nothing here? It's like, why was that there? So it's like, this movie could have gone in like three different directions. Like, you could have just made this about Christian Bale killing the gods and just had it focused on Thor versus him and kind of kept a similar tone to Ragnarok. 
Um, or you could have did the Jane Foster storyline or whatever and had that be the whole thing and have like a different villain. Um, or you could have had like the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor teamed up and going after uh, Gore the God Butcher played by Christian Bale. That's what they should have done. That's what this should have been. Like the whole um, Jane Foster storyline or whatever should have been saved for Thor 5. That should have been what they did. Like Russell Crowe shows up in here as uh, Zeus. And some people didn't like his Zeus or whatever because it was so comedic. But that actually is why I like it. I like the joke that he's supposed to be like the leader of the gods, but he is a joke. He's just like this asshole who doesn't care about anything. I actually did find it funny. Um, and, of course, they have to steal his Thunderbolt and uh, Her uh, Hercules. I mean, uh, Thor ends up hitting him with the lightning bolt or whatever and knock him down because he thinks he killed Korg, the rock dude, but his head survives. That actually would have helped raise some stakes if Korg would have died. Um, I actually think they probably should have killed him. Um, but he, he survives for no reason. I have no idea why. Um, I think at the end of the movie, they got to take off Christian Bell. And I like that... Um, the character of uh, Jane Foster actually does die. Lady Sif, Jamie Alexander's character, who was good in those other two Thor movies, actually shows up here for no reason. She just shows up where she's been wounded in a battle and she's like lost her arm, and they just play it for laughs. It's like, but they play it for laughs in a way to where it seems like a parody. This movie almost seems like a parody. And by the time you get to the end of the movie, like there's this magic planet or whatever where you can make wishes of Eternia or Eternia or whatever, and um, Christian Bell is going to use it to make a wish to like kill all the gods. And he manages to get to it, but of course Thor reminds him, like, why don't you use it to bring your daughter back? And he's like, well, duh, you'd think that was what he would think of. But we're supposed to get the idea that Christian Bell's supposed to be by vengeance or whatever. I get it. Um, but he wishes to bring his daughter back, which he gets talked into it a little easily because he's, Thor's like, well, I'll watch him or whatever. And he's like, or I'll take care of your kid. And Christian Bell, I guess, was just like, okay, Thor, I trust you to do this. But at the same time, he just wants his kid back, so I can kind of buy it. And of course, Christian Bell dies from having to use the sword or whatever. Christian Bell does a great job in this movie. Easily the scariest villain in the MCU by far in terms of actual just like performance. You can tell he's a great actor. He probably shouldn't have took this role though because he's wasted here. The kid comes back to life and like says goodbye to the father and then the movie ends with this random thing of like Thor now without Jane Foster like raising the kid and the kids like they're just making jokes about shoes and everything. Like the kid's father just died. And the next scene, she's, like, perfectly happy with Thor, like, making her eggs and everything. And uh, talking about, arguing about shoes and all that. And I'm like, there's no, like, segue into it. It just gets thrown into it. It just happens. It's almost like what they did with Jane Foster. She gets the hammer of Thor, which they never really explain why the cancer's still killing her. Like, the more she uses Molnir, the cancer's also killing her. Like, I didn't really get it. It wasn't really explained well. But uh, she just jumps into wanting to be a superhero now. Like, there's no, like, lead way into it. It's because the film's trying to do too much. Too many big plots going on. Um, and, of course, then the movie just ends with Korg narrating, like, they became love and thunder, talking about the girl and the daughter or whatever, and Thor, and they're, like, now a superhero team. Like, I don't buy that. Why is this girl interested in being a superhero partner with Thor? This movie's just way too jovial and jokey. There's no tonal balance here at all. They're trying to repeat what they did in Ragnarok, but they're taking it even further to the point where the comedy just, like, becomes parody level and overtakes the film, and there's no tonal balance to the movie. There was a tonal balance in Ragnarok because the Thor comedy, like, fun adventure is happening, like, off-world and all that, and the more serious, like, hella stuff, Ragnarok stuff, was happening on the Thor home planet of Asgard. So it was a balance. Here, there's no balance at all. Um, and so this is easily a zero out of four. This is, in, for me, the worst MCU film. Taka Watiki or whatever made one of the best MCU films in Ragnarok, Followed it up with one of with the worst, in my opinion, MCU film. So thank you guys for watching and